what we did was we, of course, we knew where everyone lived. We knew, um, we knew where they went to prison. We knew how long they stayed in prison. And we knew how much it cost to keep them in prison. So we started to turn what was a population density map into a money map. So that now what we did is we, showed, we calculated and showed how much were we spending to remove and return, as we started to try to portray this, um, to remove and return people from particular blocks each year to prison. So what we found there and started to sort of um, coin were million-dollar blocks, that is, blocks um, for which we were spending more than a million dollars every year to remove people to prison and have them serve their sentences. Um, and so these multi-million dollar blocks, again, in terms of opportunity, suggested a trade-off and, in fact, led us to start talking a little bit more in terms of kind of business language. You know, what's the public safety return on this investment for these places? Year after year, multiple millions of dollars and so on, what's changing in those places? Um, and, of course, what you ended up seeing was nothing very positive, but rather um, a huge strain on the neighborhood by the, um, you know, removal and return year after year of large numbers of um, sort of connected parenting-aged men. The contrast between what we do and what crime mapping does is that crime mapping, um, you know, it's had all kinds of different results. Let's uh, problem-solving policing and, and that kind of thing, which in itself has taken a, you know, a million different guises around the country. But what it's focusing on is, in some ways, kind of tactical, martial sort of approaches to um, law and order you know, immediate events. What we have been focusing on, by looking at where people live and population trends and demographics, is a much longer-term strategic um, picture of what's going on. Uh, especially leading to some kind of possibilities well outside of law enforcement, because in fact, what our, what our data was showing uh, in many ways was that no more law enforcement is going to change circumstances in these neighborhoods, which are already inundated with correctional activity, that is, being arrests and people going to prison and coming back from prison, et cetera. That wasn't going to change, especially when you looked close in at at really high um, incarceration areas. In fact, the Daily News did an article using our data and focusing on what we were doing on a particular um, block in Harlem, uh, which was really one of the highest incarceration blocks in the city. Um, and, and when you read the article, what you really came out with, because they, they really went after it, they interviewed everybody, the police, corrections, and they really pushed it. And what they came up with was that no, no more law enforcement in this particular strip is going to have any positive results. What this, what was obviously needed in this place, was investment. Investment in a range of infrastructural, um, socioeconomic supports that would change the conditions in this neighborhood, rather than continuing to sort of use, even in an unintentional way, imprisonment as a response to poverty. So it's that kind of strategic thinking that we were trying to um, uh, develop among ourselves and publicly.